Super Rugby Week 15 kicked off this morning with the Blues versus Sharks in North Harbour. Now, as predicted by our sports gurus, the Sharks took it 29 to 23. Joining me in studio is Garen for some gloating, and our Sport 24 contributor Herman, who's gonna—they're gonna recap the game for us. So, Garen, why don't I start with you? Um, the Sharks were down to 14 men twice during this game. Now, that was a big deal because that actually happened in the last game that they won. So, why don't you take us? Through that? For sure, yeah, a bit of deja vu for the Sharks this morning, Jen. They were down to 14 men, two separate occasions, as you said. The referee grew tired of the infringements. Firstly, he showed a yellow card to Yanni Duplessis, the prop for the Sharks. And then later in the match, um, France Stay in the Flaff got a yellow card. Now, if you remember correctly, to last weekend's game, the Sharks were down to, to 13 men at one stage. Yeah. They had a red card, John Daisel. He was sent off in the 16th minute, and then they followed later with another yellow card. So discipline, not, not that good for the Sharks at the moment. Jake White's going to... Absolutely. You know, the crazy thing is, you know, if you look at all the stats, they should have lost this game. They made fewer running meters, more tackles. They were penalized more. The only, the only place they really were ahead was on the scorecard at the end, which is, I suppose, the only place they really needed to yeah. be ahead. So credit to them. But Jake White will really have to have a good sit down with these players, sort out the discipline, because it's going to cost them, especially in the playoffs where, you know, a 10 minutes sin binning can certainly cost you the match. Well, regardless of all of that, we still pegged them to win. <laughs> I, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't? No, I went for the upset. <laughs> well, <laughs> I want to go through some tweets with you, Herman. Um, front row Grunt tweeted, Blues pinched for holding on Prattley the Pratt again. Why don't you tell me what Tank meant by that? Yes, he was, he was referring to the Blues uh, replacement prop who came on. He, um, he was pinched twice in, in short succession for holding one of the Sharks players back yeah. without the ball. And that's pr pretty, it was pretty interesting. It was pretty good to see that the referee made that call because yeah. just the previous week, the reason why the Sharks guy, John Dazel, was sent off was for retaliation when he stomped, stamped onto the, the Crusaders guy's head. And he did that because he was held wow. back. So it was good to see that the referee actually this week as soon as he saw someone do that, he penalized him, actually. All right. And now, Tank also tweeted something I thought was interesting. Absolutely horrific TMO call. Pathetic. Writes previous wrong, though. One each way in this game. Not ideal. What's yeah, he talking about? I, th I think he was referring to, to the try the Blue scored. The, the winger mm -hmm. scored in the corner. It, was, it looked like a bit of a dodgy forward pass. It could have been a decision was, was referred to the, yeah. the television match official. I'm not sure if it was a pathetic call, but... It was very debatable. It was definitely yeah. I actually wrote in my, my, th my live updates that I did, I said it was definitely a home, home decision, a home time call that was made. It could have gone either way. It was sort of a 50-50 call. Unfortunately for the Sharks, they were on the wrong end of it, but they still won, so it was yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still happy. Yes. Garen, I know you have some tweets you want to share with us. Why don't you take us through them? Good. I've got two tweets. The first one is from Craig Ray. He wrote, the Sharks scrum had murdered the Blues all night, even with seven men, yet they were still pinged. You know, it's one of these occasions, you know, where you've got eight against seven. The eight obviously clearly dominate the seven. And, you know, you, you still get pinged for, you know, too excessive pushing where you don't push straight. You sort of scrum in at the angle. So it's always a bit controversial when a scrum is down to seven men. You know, you know you're going to go back, backwards at a rate of knots, yet you still get the penalty often because the other team is just not scrumming legally as they should. Yeah. So that was the first... The first um, tweet and then you know we've talked a lot about Kubis Reinach the, the shark scrum off he's had a fantastic season to date um, again scoring an opportunist try in this match which really swung the match in the Sharks' favor last week again when they were down to 30 men he did the same sort of thing two uh, very in. similar tries this week and the previous week yeah. sort so of against the run of play and it definitely I think we guaranteed he sh definitely should be man of the match or definitely our man of the match yeah he was MVP for sure but Dan Retiff tweeted that just adds to my surprise that Kubis Ranach is not in the Springbok squad. Surely he's the future, question mark. So, you know, he is the future of South African rugby, especially at number nine. We've had a succession of really good top scrum offs, Jus van der Vestes, Vestes and um, Farida Priya. And now we're looking for the next one, next player who's going to really be there for the next 100 tests, hopefully. And he certainly is, is an option. So he scored some fantastic tries for the Sharks this year, kept them in the match. Now, Herman, you briefly mentioned who your man of the match was. Can you elaborate on that for us? Yeah, I'd, I'd say Rana was definitely the man of the match. I think that try that he scored was definitely something that swung the match. At that stage, the Sharks had just, it was just after they, they received that, that yellow card or that period that they played with 14 mm -hmm. men. The Blues had just gotten back to within three points of them. And, yeah, the, the try put them 10 points ahead. Again, when he scored, I just knew, you just knew that that was the game. That was the game-changing try. 
And yeah, you know, in games like these, which is tough, you know, this, as, as Garen said, you know, the stats show that the Sharks were up against it for most of the match. And for him to score there, I, that, that for me was the match clincher. So I, I'd give him the award, definitely. Yeah, I think it's a no-brainer, but do you agree? Absolutely. You know, there were a couple of other standout players. You know, Franz Stein, he's been a centre most of his life, but he's been moved to fly. For the Sharks have got a bit of an injury crisis at number 10. And it's one thing to be awarded all these penalties, but not land the kicks, not turn them into three-pointers or convert your tries. And he's been really on song this, this season with yeah, the boot. His, so. his goal-kicking as well. I think he only missed one kick tonight as well. And when the Sharks got into range, they got a penalty and, and he converted. So he, he was the one who sort of kept them going. Mm. So he did also play a key part, but I'll still give it to Rana for his <laughs> piece of brilliance. I think you're being Out-voted. challenged here again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Outvoted. But there, there were a couple of stand-up, but I think those were the, the two main ones for the Sharks tonight. All right. Well, there are three more South African games to go this weekend. You can follow live updates on sport24.co.za, and we'll see you all on Monday.